Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video you'll be watching me get my tavern started from the ground up. To do this we'll be using the endless mode and I'll also be giving some commentary and talking about the mechanics and some other aspects of the game. So this beginning part is pretty basic stuff. I'm getting all the requirements down to be able to open the tavern. Having these rooms built that I'm that you're watching me do now isn't a requirement to sort of get the game started. But you know, if you want to make that dollar dollar bill, y'all, you gotta have these rooms. You know, when people come into the bar to either drink, to watch music performance, which I'll show you how to build the stage for that. Um, you, you get all sorts. They the NPCs want to do multiple things and sometimes they just want to get absolutely drunk and then they want to go to sleep. So this is why you have these rooms. The price by default is 600 gold per stay in these rooms. You know, you can increase that if you want to be a little bit cheeky. So I decided to go for you know a couple of rooms to start off with to get that money rolling in early doors. The next room we have is the restroom. Now the first time I loaded this game up, which would have been yesterday, which me saying yesterday doesn't really have any relevance on a video, it doesn't really matter when you watch it, but I was making a mistake, and the mistake I was making is I was mapping out the space required for the room, and then you see me put one of the toilet stalls down. I wasn't sure how to add extra bathroom stalls, because there's a furniture tab which you'll see me buy the bar and some chairs a little bit later and I assumed that it would be in there but it's not what you have to do is some items are only room specific and you can only buy them in the original mapping out area of the room that you're doing so in this is instance I want extra bathroom stalls so once I've laid the first one down you'll see that there is a green marker with the name bathroom stall at the top of the screen so what you have to do is you just click that icon and it allows you to put down another one. In my first sort of playthrough that I was doing, I wasn't because I wasn't sure how to do this, I was making multiple rooms. So I was making multiple restrooms around my tavern. And obviously it was taking up a lot of space because I wasn't sure how to add extra bathroom stalls. So I was just trying to cope with one. So while I was rambling on about how to add extra bathroom stalls, I noticed on the footage that something sort of minor but it could be important was going on and I should sort of tell you really so to be able to pause the game what you have to do is you have to go into your furniture tab and you have to buy a free standing clock once you've bought this clock you're able to pause the time and you're able to fast forward time so the reason I buy the clock straight away is I don't want any customers coming into the building yet this isn't the big grand opening I had planned I don't even have a bar yet so if you're looking to pause the time, you have to build that clock. So here we are making the staff room. Staff rooms are obviously important, you know, when you employ your staff, they have needs. Um, they have a tired meter, which you'll see la later on. And, you know, they need to rest in between their shift. The same principle goes with what I was telling you about the bathroom stalls. So you have to have multiple couches to have the, to get the most sort of benefit. Again, when I was originally doing this on my first playthrough, I was making multiple staff rooms because I didn't know how to make extra couches. Well, now that I do, you see that I place you know, a couple around in a nice sort of spacious room, and this should be a good size for early game. The next area that we're gonna do is the bar area, the most important area in my opinion. So the first thing that we put down is a stage area. So what the stage area does is randomly a musician will enter the tavern and go onto the stage to perform now while they're performing it gives sort of a buff or a debuff depending on which way you want to look at it to the people drinking and what it does it it basically sobers them up so a sober customer is going to spend more money and they're less likely to throw up on the floor so your handy men have less work to do so i decide to put the stage in the area that i'm going to have the bar and the benches basically where the drunken people are most likely to be you'll see it's got a radius and that's the area of effect so i'm trying to get the most you know the most out of it 
The idea is to keep people sober and keep them spending that money. We also put some benches down because once the people who are drinking at the bar, that they want like a little rest before they have another drink, they won't necessarily sit at the bar, they'll want to go and sit on one of these benches. Some of them want to go and get a book as well, so yeah, they're going to want to sit down. So this is why we have some benches as well. Next, you're going to see me put some tables and chairs down. These are used by people coming into the tavern who want to eat. I go for about eight tables because throughout the game, you receive mail from people who want to request reservations. So you could get a mail saying, you know, they want to request six or eight tables. You know, that's guaranteed money. So you got to make sure you get some tables. It's, it's worthwhile. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you in this video, which is the last thing you need to know to get the tavern started, is employing the staff. Now, when you get to this point um, and constantly throughout the game, you'll have to employ more staff. Take your time and actually read what the information about the person is telling you. Some of the staff members can come with um, abilities such as they work faster, they tire less or they recover from resting a lot quicker. None of the employees while I was recording this had any of the abilities, but just, just read. Some of the staff cost more to employ than the others and you're also able to um, specifically set where you want them or what you want them to do. So if you know that you just want to employ a handyman and just to sweep the floor, then you're not going to really want to pay him top dollar because you, you, know, you just want someone to sweep the floor. So think about that. Don't just employ the first person that you see. You know, time is money. And the more time you spend paying someone to do something that you're not going to see the benefit of, you're losing money. If you enjoy the video and you want to catch more of my reviews and gameplay videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button.